Question. What is the best subsidy in heaven? Now, I can already hear people screaming two particular answers at me from left to right. But are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? Had to say it twice. In this video, we're going to open the S files. Take a look at each of the subsidies and their characteristic buffs, and then move on to the discussion of which can be considered best. Hi. And welcome to Red Ebony. I am Akayasha. You can call me Aka. Let's dive in. Now, each subsidy has two main characteristic buffs. And we're going to be looking at the two buffs for each of the subsidies. We're going to take our first look at the European subsidy. First buff, main city construction speed. So it increases the, the main city construction speed and shaves off some time from the timer of your cons of the construction of your buildings. Second buff, general XP from monster kill. So if you have this subsidy, your boss general, your rally joining generals will gain an increased amount of XP when they go and kill bosses. Here we have the China subsidy. First buff, main city resource production speed. So it boosts your in-city resource production speed for each of the different types of resources that you have. The second buff, training speed. So it gives a boost to your training speed, meaning that it takes you less time to train a certain amount of troops. Next up, Japan Subsidy. The first buff, main city attacking troop attack. So in PVP, when you are sending your troops out to attack, it increases the attack of all of the troops that you are sending out. The second buff, research factory material production speed. So in your research factory, when you have your various materials cooking, like your dragon scales, it reduces the amount of time for those to complete. We move on to the Korean subsidy. The first buff, main city warehouse capacity. So it increases the amount of resources that can be protected from being stolen during PVP. Second buff, extra resources from gathering. So when you send your troops out to gather on the world tiles, they bring back a certain amount of extra resources on top of what they have gathered. We move on to America. The first buff, Current subordinate city gold production speed. So it increases the amount of gold that you can get from each of your subsidies. The second buff, research speed. It increases your research speed, meaning that it shaves off some of the time required for the various technologies that you are researching in your academy. We move on to the next one, the Russian subsidy. The first buff, in-city troop attack. So during PVP, when you are defending, it increases the attack of all of the troops in your city that are defending. The second buff, trap attack. So it increases the attack of all of the traps that you have in your city. And we move on to the final one, the Arabian subsidy. The first buff, hospital capacity. So it increases the amount of troops that can be contained and healed in your hospital. The second buff, healing speed. It reduces the amount of time required to heal the troops that you have in your hospital. Right, now out of these seven subsidies, which is the best one? And at this juncture, I would like to address the elephant in the room. Japan subsidies, Russia subsidies. People go crazy over these two subsidies and you see it every time the historical subsidy event comes up picture a hungry mob waiting outside of a bakery for freshly baked bread hot out of the oven it's that kind of thing and to an extent it's understandable why because when you get to a certain level there are very few ways for you to get an additional edge and one of the few ways that you have is to get better subsidies. So people, advanced level players, PVP enthusiasts, 
are always looking for Russia and Japan subsidies. But for everyone else, why? Now, what I'm about to say might hit some people like a ton of bricks. The fact is that outside of PVP, Japan and Russia subsidies are essentially useless. But seriously, let's think about it for a second. How much time, say in a week, do you actually spend on PVP? In fact, I'm going to take it a step further and switch it up from do you even lift, bruh, to do you even PVP? If your answer to both of those questions is not very good, then how much value are you actually going to get from having Japan and Russia subsidies? In my opinion, people that are still smack in the middle of their development will find much greater value from Korea and China subsidies. Even American subsidies, particularly for people that are grinding it out, researching those technologies every day in the academy. In fact, we can even talk about the black swan of subsidies, the Arabian subsidy. If you are one of the main boss killers for your alliance and you still get a lot of wounded every day, Think about how much value you could get from having a stack of Arabian subsidies. Why? Because the healing speed buff on Arabian subsidies also applies to troops that have been wounded in boss killings. Here, I'll show you. This is my hospital. I have a few wounded troops in there. Look at the time. I'm going to switch my culture from Japan to Arabia. Now I'll take a look at the time. Again, how much value do you think you would have if you're killing bosses on the regular from having this increased healing speed buff? Let's even circle back to the advanced players I mentioned earlier. With the recent update to K40 and building costs and speed up requirement costs becoming astronomical and keeping in mind that everyone has only a finite number of subsidies that they can hold, how much value are you going to be getting from having all those Japan and Russia subsidies at that kind of level, as opposed to having a different type of subsidies, let's say European subsidies. Now, with that being said, there are a number of strategies that you can employ to help you maximize the benefits that you can get from having certain types of subsidies. The first one is focus. What are you trying to accomplish? which subsidies would help you out the best. For example, if you're focusing on gathering, you want to stack up Korean subsidies. If you want to boost your in-city production, you want to stack up on China subsidies, that kind of thing. The next strategy is balance, having a few of a number of types of subsidies so that you're covering most of the bases that you need to. Here, for example, I've got a few Japans, a few Koreas, a few Europe's, one China. That's why I have at the moment right now. So I've basically employed a balanced strategy for the kind of subsidies that I'm holding. The third type of strategy that you could employ is alliance sharing, where you and a few of your friends or your alliance teammates have different types of subsidies that you share amongst yourselves. You know, Keep it in the family kind of thing. So for example, if someone has a new keep level that they're trying to push, they can share all the European subsidies that they have within their group to get the maximum benefit out of that. Now, those are the three kinds of strategies that you can employ. Of course, with everybody putting out historical subsidy events on a regular now, in fact, one just started today, it is a good time for you to be thinking about the kind of subsidies that you want to get. For me personally, at the stage of development that I'm at and what I am trying to achieve in the game, Korea and China are the best subsidies for me. And for obvious reasons, both of them for the boost to resources that they can give and China specifically for the increase in training speed. Because at the stage of development that I am at, I'm going to be building a lot of troops very soon in the future. So instead of being fixated on what is the best subsidy in the game, 
The question that needs to be answered is, what is the best subsidy for you, the stage of development that you are at right now, and what you are trying to achieve going on into the future? Only you can answer that question, and I hope that the information provided in this video can get you closer to that answer. Thank you, and Aka signing out.